Welcome, everybody, to the 10th anniversary. Uh, it's a celebration of the first premiere of the musical Goodbye Barcelona. Now, for those of you watching on YouTube, if you don't know much about what it's about, all you have to do is go back to 1936 to Spain. It was the start of the Spanish Civil War. Tens of thousands of volunteers came from all over the world to fight against the fascism that was uh, threatening Spain with a complete takeover. These groups were mainly in the international brigades. Many of them had little or no pay, little or no training, so they put themselves at the most incredible personal risk simply in order to fight for what they believed in. Now, in 2011, a musical appeared in London that was about the international brigades. It focused on a member of the British contingent, which included about a total of about 2,500 people, and uh, his uh, fellow combatants, and even members of his family, and of course, the people he found in Catalonia and Spain uh, when he was here fighting to try and help their, their cause. The, uh, the show is, uh, was a unique, and is a unique musical. It was premiered in the Arcola, Arcola Theatre in London uh, on this exact day, 10 years ago in 2011. Then it came to Barcelona's Teatro del Raval in 2013. Part of the show was performed in New York in 2014. The whole show, or most of it, was premiered in Madrid's Teatro Infante Isabel in 2016. Goodbye Barcelona was also showcased in West Germany and in Germany, sorry, in Wunzendale and in Mexico City, both in, in 2019. And we're going to begin at the beginning, which means beginning with Karl Lefkowitz and Judith Johnson, who um, composed and put the lyrics on the show and wrote the book or the play, if you like, of the show, respectively. Um, I'd just like to ask you, it must have been, you were there for the very first premiere of this show ever in London in 2011. Anything you particularly remember about that or how you felt when the show first appeared? It was a really, really exciting night, you know, a very supportive audience. Um, and a standing ovation at the end, and we were, you know, um, just so happy and relieved that um, that we'd managed to get there. I think I remember the very first reading in two thousand and eight, and when one of the brigaders was there, called Sam Lesser, and uh, the top Spanish uh, historian in the world, Paul Preston. So, oh. I was just on complete tender hooks, and then I was thinking, if they if they don't like it, I mean, that's the end of that's the end of all our work. But luckily, they loved it. So, but 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 the opening night was a huge relief, and uh, yeah, the start of this process. So it was a great night. So, did you find that difficult to find a balance uh, between talking about something very serious, where people had gone, people had died, and turning it into um, a musical? I kind of really always wanted to, to just keep stick to the personal, the personal experience of these amazing men and women that went out there. Um, and that's, that's why we chose a sort of double love story in a way, just so that we could um, uh, just relate it very much to the personal side. We felt that by doing that, we would um, making that kind of almost small personal stories, we would be able to tell a, a universal story about um, courage as well. Lorena, what, what did you do? <laughs> what, yeah, I know you've been all over the place promoting Goodbye Barcelona, but I don't know the details yes. exactly. So I've been in, in Barcelona, in Madrid, in New York and, and Mexico doing a bit of everything. Um, so I guess that the memory that I want to share is it was right at the very uh, beginning. I, I knew, I learned about the show in um, Barcelona. I was working there and I was sent to do some sort of a video for a, a media outlet, uh, a Catalan media outlet about the, sh the show. So I went to Dalston, I went to the Arcola Theatre and I was just so moved by the story, by the performance and of course by, by the music that I could not stop crying for most of it. 
So when I saw the, the musical, I felt some sort of an urge to help, to spread it. And I guess the story began there. So I'm really happy that Goodbye Barcelona is still going. And I, I hope that it lives for, um, for years to come. Wonderful. You mentioned it's still going, which is perhaps the most extraordinary thing about it. After 10 years, it's still alive. And we'll be talking about that a bit later. Um, for now, we've got the the director of the London production, the very first production, uh, Karen Rabinovitz, who's, um, uh, again, I'd just like to ask her about um, how she felt about putting on the very first production of uh, Goodbye Barcelona. I was very lucky and very happy to be invited to take over from Mehmet Ergen, the director of the Arco uh, Arcola Theatre, who did the first uh, rehearsed reading. I took over at that point. The cast that we managed to assemble did an extraordinary job. I was very, very grateful to them. I think that the trio of men who sang the uh, the different factions song. They just love that mm -hmm. song. And so that always took off. I think that, uh, oh, the, the, one of the people that I was most excited about because it made hair stand up on my arm was we managed to get a young singer. She was pretty young, not that long out of college called Laura Tebbett to sing La Passionaria. And mm -hmm. that voice, singing that material, I think is a really, really exciting thing. Anything you remember especially about directing Goodbye Barcelona in Barcelona itself? Even for the very young actors, there was always something in the air that was very serious, <laughs> very touching. Uh, um, and indeed, there were moments that, that we were even crying I'm trying to keep on going, working, because there were a lot of memories, maybe for memories of, of things that our parents or grandparents have told us about the war, a war that we lost. And um, like I say, there were too many wounds opened. But that, I think, makes production so, so special. And it was really a surprise how all the people in Barcelona came and really touched for it. Really, really surprising for all of us. It was a big success in Barcelona, wasn't it? Were you surprised by that? Yes, yes, because uh, indeed uh, it was uh, uh, a little theater. It was a little production. There were no famous famous names, there were no celebrities in, in, the, in the cast, and, and well, we thought the people could be in the, in the subject, of course, but it was a really, really, really big <laughs> success, and, <laughs> and it was a surprise for us there in Barcelona, and especially out of Barcelona, when we, when we came to Madrid to the premiers to the, the price of the musical theater. I thought we could go over and talk to uh, Hans Friedrichs in uh, New York. Yes, it was, a, it was a stage reading that was done at the York Theater Company, which is one of our wonderful off-Broadway theater companies that just celebrated its 50th anniversary. And uh, their producing artistic director, Jim Morgan, met Carl, uh, because Carl was in New York, and uh, Jim had just seen a production of Parade that I had directed here in the city and thought that I might be a good fit. And I remember meeting Carl on, I, I think it was December, it was in the middle of a snowstorm, uh, and uh, he had sent me the script and also the video of the London production, which was very helpful. And I met him and we, we talked for a couple of hours. Um, and he asked me if I would be interested in, in doing this. And I said, yes, let me, let me read it a couple more times. And, and get back to you. Um, one of the things that I, I was very fixated on was the, the character of the mother. Uh, because to me, that's a fascinating story. To me, it's less about the romantic aspects of the, the story and more about the parallel stories of the, the mother and the son. The York Theater, like the Arcola, is a smaller venue. And I wanted to sort of focus in 
so that the, the war was there, but it was not the primary focus. The people were the primary focus. And, and the question of why do you go and fight a war that isn't your own? Uh, Karen mentioned these problems like, you know, you're here on a small stage and you're, uh, you're describing all this action, all these changes of scenes. I guess being a sort of director, producer of a small house, we've had some limitations uh, on Carl saying, like, let's have no more than five, six actors. Let's have no more than two, three musicians. So there had to be a way to find how to tell the story with the limited amount of uh, production members, the cast, the, the musicians. In a way, I guess that's quite a, a liberating thing because you know you had to do it that way rather than thinking there are so many ways to tell the story, but we, we have to tell this way. And I think they were incredibly well prepared for that. I think uh, this intimacy in an intimate venue uh, told a very big story in the end. I was very happy. I was very, very impressed with the work and I, I thought it was very emotional. And the video was by Mark Smith, who was the musical director of the original London production back in 2011. I think what resonates with me is it was a show that we knew would have international appeal. We knew that it appealed to people from all over the world because of the nature of the story. and. It proved it to us. We took it to New York and it resonated just as well there as it did in London. And that was an intensely gratifying experience, I think, to see that. And I think really that my overwhelming feeling about Goodbye Barcelona is one of gratitude, I think, that we've been involved with something that is so important. I think we knew it at the time, but the fact that we're talking about a London Fringe production 10 years on says something, right? <laughs> it does, that never happens. We rarely talk about big productions 10 years on. So I think for me, the workshops were lovely, but my overwhelming feeling has always been one of gratitude to be involved in something that was so touching, so important, so profound. You know, not many musicals get to talk with that kind of language. So we're going to talk uh, for a moment to um, Pep Papel and Danny Campos. I just wanted to ask you, first of all, very, first of all, anything you remember especially about the uh, the opening of Goodbye Barcelona in Barcelona itself. I mean that. I, I do remember that it was on the it was on Catalan public television news. It, it was in a lot of local media. We we were all very united. And yes. We we formed like a family with super good energy. Yeah, the chemistry. The chemistry <laughs> with the team, with all okay. actors and musicians. Yeah. It was awesome. Just awesome. Adeu, Barcelona, Espanya, Aquí deixo enrere molts amics meus Viuran ja per sempre recorda't si us plau dels seus noms Quan els teus fills preguntin què vam fer Digues que aquell dia va ser un cop funest Explica com el foc es va apagant Ens volíem quedar we found out uh, uh, the history claim of that could be as interesting as, for instance, Bertolt Brecht's Mother Courage, Mutter Courage, taking the historical part as a reason or background uh, to tell a personal story, the personal story of a young guy uh, with great illusions and finding out that war is reality and not an illusion. And uh, the love story, the two love stories, was the point of view that the agency, the editor, was thinking, and we're talking about that, it could be a very, very good uh, yeah, possibility to represent that in German theater. We had Goodbye Barcelona two times in uh, Luisenburg Festspiel. Uh, that was the first time when uh, Karl was there and Judith, and they showed us what they did that the, all the audience was very impressed. That was the first time. But, uh, the second time that was this year, 
when we are looking back, what had we uh, resolved? What we did we get? And um, in that um, in that moment, uh, we uh, offered in that showcase uh, one song from Goodbye Barcelona to this audience of about 40 theater makers working in musical. We got very, very good uh, reactions. The play has to be obviously open in London, then in Barcelona, which is uh, an obvious uh, place to go. And the next stop should be Mexico. We did a presentation with uh, six or seven songs at Radio Unam. I, I think that's important that the Republic and its ideals pervived, uh, survived in Mexico and they made a huge change. So I think it's a must that we have this, this show in Mexico.